All right, so two new movies that came out this year have released on HBO Max. They are titled See How They Run and Don't Worry Darling. Everyone's heard about Don't Worry Darling, but a lot of people have not heard about See How They Run. I have watched both of them, and this one is going to be a little different than uh, my other combined reviews, because for this one, I'm going to be real brief and see how they run, because I may or may not have been just a tiny bit sleepy, and I may or may not have almost fallen asleep multiple times, which really simulates a drunken movie watching experience. So I'm going to be real brief with that one, but for don't worry darling, I got a lot to say about. But before I get started with this video, please subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, and comment below. What is your opinions on both of these movies, especially Don't Worry Darling, because we know this is a conversation starter film. I want to know what you guys personally think about it. And with that said, See How They Run is a murder mystery movie that follows the detective and his partner as they have to figure out a murder mystery because someone died and they got to figure it out. And for this one, it's kind of reminds me of a play that I was almost in that I quit unnecessary drama, but that I quit because it is tired of the play that goes wrong. This one kind of reminds me of that because it's kind of a mimic of Agatha Christie. It's got some fun moments in here. Let's get into specifics here because like I said, it, it was really a drunken movie experience. So I don't really have much to say about the movie at all, but basically I was really tired after a long 12 hour day of work so it's just gonna be pretty difficult to speak about but yeah so getting into specifics the cast here was great we start off with this character this detective character and then the de not the detective this director character and then he's killed off which that to me really was an effective way of starting the movie and then the rest of the cast here there's nice supporting characters here they all got a time to shine ones kind of reminds me of murder on the Orient express because people are just sitting around and they're just talking and they're trying to figure out the mystery and then as we get into this film which was kind of an odd way because apparently they got an invitation to an to agatha christie's house which was kind of just thrown in there and when i think about the finale it technically really made me feel like Oh, huh, that was an interesting way to take things but then you think about it and I thought about it and I was like yeah it's odd but it's kind of works for the kind of movie this was and then the big reveal is the murderer it works it does it doesn't not make sense it makes sense this movie was just a basic murder mystery film it's not like Knives Out which is right there where it's absolutely perfect it's not like um what's it called it's not like murder on the Orient express it's not like clue it's not like any of those movies it hits all the beats people meet people characters talk figure out who the murderer is it's got some fun moments it's enjoyable at times like i said it was a drunken experience but i did enjoy the film as a whole and that is why see how they run is going to get a b from me okay if you guys love that movie i'm sorry i was so brief with it i just if I was just gonna make a video on that on its own, I couldn't really say anything about it because I didn't feel anything was wrong about it. The movie was just a basic murder mystery movie that had pretty good cast and, and an interesting mystery and an interesting way to end the movie. That's all I gotta say about it. Now let's talk about Don't Worry Darling, which is really gonna fill up time on this video because Don't Worry Darling is a an, is an experience. As you know, this movie went through some serious development hell. I don't know all the details on it. All I know is that Sheila Booth and the director, Olivia Wilde, clashed it out or something. They said something, then they all complained, and then something else came back. I don't really follow that. The only news I get is from the John Campia Show podcast. So that's the only movie news I get when, because I'm at work half the time. That's the only drama I get. So it really went through that. Does the movie show it? Not really, actually. Sure, Sheila Booth would have been better than Harry Styles in the role, and that's the first subject we're gonna talk about is the cast. This cast here is phenomenal. Of course, we got Florence Pugh, she's hot. Uh, edit that out. <laughs> I'm not gonna edit that out. Florence Pugh, great in this movie. The movies that she was in that I saw, she was just as hard in person, they fight. It, it's just that kind of movie 
where people just fight and she's just a hardened warrior. This movie, however, she is not that. She plays a housewife. She's got interactions with everyone else. She laughs. She has fun. It's a completely different character from what she's used to playing as. And this whole cast here is great. Harry Styles, I'm not going to say he's bad. I can really see Sheila Booth in this. Every time something happened, I was just like, oh, he was supposed to be played by Sheila Booth, all right. But he's not bad in the role. The big star for me here, though, was Florence Pugh. We've already talked about her. Chris Pine. Chris Pine also is a character who always plays the same characters, basically in the same thing. Steve Trevor and... I don't know his name. The guy in the Star Trek movies. They are the same exact characters. They're all goofballs. There's other movies, um... I can't think of any other movies that he's in right now, but he's always the same character in what I see, and in this one, he's kind of got these interesting scenes. There's this movie, there's a scene in the movie where they're all sitting down at the table and he's talking to this girl and you can feel his menacing and you can feel he's trying to hold all this together and he really works here. He is a great villain. Not as good as Mr. Um, John Goodman in 10 Cloverfield Lane, but he is just awesome in this movie and is has an awesome screen presence as well. And then we move on besides that this is this isn't a thriller like 10 cloverfield lane where it's about the characters being scary it throws in a lot of scary scenery but it's got enough intrigue for the first two acts where i sit down i was like i really want to know what's going on i really want to know what's going on i really want to know what's going on it happens over and over something happens it gets interesting and by the middle of the film i was 100 invested because we see things we see we start piecing we start piecing together the mystery, and by the end of the film, the reveals are here, and the reveals kind of work. When I say kind of, that's my big negative, is that the pacing in this movie is really odd. So, the first two acts are really good, and then we get to the part where we really feel like we should have had another half hour, honestly, because it's the dinner table sequence. She's telling people these things that no one knows how she knows. There's no way she knows how she knows things about everyone in this entire town. It doesn't really show us that. So it would have been nice to see a couple more scenes of her walking around town, asking people questions, getting the same answers. It would have been really nice to see that. But then as we get to the end, it starts getting really slow and it starts feeling really slow. And for a two hour movie, I was like, yeah, this could have happened 15 minutes earlier. And so my boredom, boredom of watching this film for way too long, really kind of started to creep in. And it kind of damaged my experience with the film as a whole. And that really sucks because these, the answers were pretty interesting. They really worked here at, in some certain situations. But then I just sat back, I was like, huh, yeah, okay. I kind of felt disappointed by the time I walked away from this, and that is not how I want to leave a movie. And so the pacing is really weird. But then after we get to the reveals, there's a chase sequence that happens, and suddenly it gets interesting all of a sudden. I got invested in this one. So the pacing here really just kind of messes with your views of the movie. But for the most part, this is just an average thriller. It doesn't got anything specifically interesting besides the cast. It's this thriller movie where you sit back and you're like, okay, yeah, I want to know what happens. But it was a perfect day for me to watch it. It was rainy outside. It was cloudy. It was cold. So I sat back and I was like, yeah, let me watch this movie. And it's a perfect rainy day movie. I recommend you watch this movie on a rainy day because you sit back and you think, yeah, that was fun. And that was a fun watch. Even though I walked away from it a bit disappointed because of the pacing issues. I had fun with this one and it's really held together by the cast. And then when you sit back and you think on, my end, on the uh, 2022 year ranking, it's just one of those movies that's in the middle. There's a lot of those movies that's in the middle compared to like The Gray Man and all these movies. It's a little worse than those movies because of the pacing and because of what happens. But I kind of really enjoyed this movie and I don't really feel like the Bellum in Hell really screwed this one over. For Don't Worry Darling, it's getting a B-. minus. I really like this movie. Not really like it. I enjoyed myself. It's a one and done movie. I'm never going to watch it again. I'm not in a rush to watch Olivia Wilde's other movies. But Don't Worry Darling was a fun time, especially on a rainy day. So thank you guys for clicking on this video. Please make sure to subscribe, like button, hit the bell, and comment down below. What is your opinions? On Don't Worry Darling, 
on see how they run i want to know all that and more i got a bunch of videos coming up so to watch those you're gonna have to subscribe and as always subscribe join the darn army peace out